What is up, YouTube? I'm looking all kind of crazy. <laughs> I just took out those braids from the baby shower. Like, they were crazy. I haven't been updating you guys in a while. Um, it's a lot that I want to say that's been going on about how it is to be a mom in this journey. Um, so far, after I've had Sabrina, um, I lost about... 20 pounds like immediately I guess it was water weight or I don't know what it was and I felt like I had this loose skin like all over my body but I was able to you know cross my legs for the first time yes like my thighs were extra thick I couldn't even cross my legs I would say three weeks after I had her I started um doing some fast walking in the park a little jogging um I actually stopped, um, I don't want to say menstruating, but, you know, after you give birth around the three-week mark, um, I wasn't bleeding anymore. Um, in the beginning, I was struggling with, am I producing enough milk? And I was supplementing, supplementing with um, some Infamil and some Similac. Now, I exclusively just um, breastfeed her, and I try my best to use the Medela system pump. And I also have a um, Lansino um, hand pump that I use um, to feed her. I mostly use the hand pump because I feel like I get more out. I'm more in control of the suction as opposed to the machine for the um, Medela. Um, I don't even think the, I don't believe that the suction is sucking as hard as it once was. I think it kind of gets weakened after a while. Um, so far as sleepless nights, was like, oh, you never get sleep, da, da, da. I mean, at the same time, we're both getting to know each other all her life, uh, up until birth, she knows it's being inside me, she never needed to breathe, she never needed to, you know, have a time to eat or sleep, everything is, you know, or be warm, everything is set and done for her inside, and having her outside of me, I can definitely say that, you know, if you're anxious, you're nervous, you know, this this new relationship, we're trying to get to know each other with you out of the womb. And um, so first, we had her, finally got her to sleep in the crib, but it was only for maybe like 30 minutes or an hour. All right, fine. Then we will hold her. People telling us not to hold her. You know, everybody's giving their opinions about what you should do with your child but it's like it's your kid like I said you got to know each other every kid is different you know I can't parent how you parent just like you know you can't parent how I parent so um we had on a monitor we would watch her sleeping and stuff like that then I realized that she didn't like sleeping on her back she seemed like she's so advanced for her age she would turn to the side and you know, with the whole SIDS thing, they don't want them sleeping on their stomach, they don't want them sleeping on their side, me being a first time mom, that's worrying me, the fact that she cries, the high shriekage of it, like, hits me to the core, you know, and um, I decided, you know, we should get the um, bassinet, we finally got it, and I got the courage to say, you know what, I'm gonna watch her, I'm gonna put her on her stomach, and I put her on her stomach, because pretty much she sleeps on me like this. So this is how it pretty much is that she's sleeping on her stomach. And she sleeps for like an hour or two. Am I sleeping too? No the hell I'm not because I'm watching her because I'm still like, oh my God, you know, with the whole SIDS thing. But I've calmed down um, these past five weeks of her life. You know, things have been, you know, good. I already went... Yesterday was Monday. I already went for my six-week checkup, and they said everything was healed fine. I can resume activity. I said, oh, I can resume doing nothing then. So um, as of now, um, the routine was to put her into the bassinet, and um, but so far that hasn't been working out that well. Um, because she has been having a stuffy nose, and I've used the nose Frida, and that's worked a little bit, but lately it's gotten a little worse, and she's still able to latch on, she's still able to drink a bottle, but as of last night, 
maybe around three, four o'clock, I woke up and she was laying on her father like this and um, they were sleeping. We all were sleeping on the couch um, because the bedroom is a little too cold. And if you put the heater on, when they turn the heat on, it's super stuffy and my boyfriend has asthma. And I was like, you know, it's better for us to just sleep in the living room. It's a little, it's a lot more roomy, you know, and you get a little bit of a cold breeze with the warmth. Um, so I noticed she's, <gasps> and that just freaked me out. So I'm like, okay, what is going on? And I'm checking up her nose with a flashlight from my phone. And I'm noticing that her nostrils are like really stuffed up. They're really close to the skin. It's really close together. Like you can't even really see anything in between them. So I'm squeezing the saline in there and I'm calming her down, rocking her, I'm walking around and trying to, you know, stop from being upset because the more upset she's getting, the more her nose is getting stopped up and mucus is building up back there. And our last appointment, they're like, oh, it's from the hormones, you know, she's stuffed nose and all this stuff. So I'm like, all right. So um, the saline ended up working. Her nose ended up, you know, opening back up. And it's just today's been a rough day um, with her sleeping and being agitated. Um, people say that you shouldn't give them baby Vicks right away because she's five months. But she, she getting a little chunky chunks. You know, she getting a little bigger and chunkier. <laughs> you see, I got the humidifier right there that I had on her earlier. And um, so far, her left nostril is stopped up, but the right one is good. And um, also, so that's what we're dealing with right now. I just want to make sure her breathing is okay because, you know, it kind of freaked me out. Now, when it comes to her belly button, the belly button fell off, I would say, maybe 10 days, 10 to 12 days after and I wanted to make sure it was closed. You know, I didn't really touch it. I cleaned around it. Um, I try not to have the pamper over it so that it can air out. And, you know, nobody... No, it's little things about a baby, just like with pregnancy that I figured out. that Nobody tells you. They tell you the major things. Oh, you get nauseous when you're pregnant. They don't tell you about the the round ligament pain and, you know, little stuff that's important. So they didn't tell me that when a belly button falls, oh, it magically heals. No, it's still technically open. And you can see some pus-like um, fluid there. And if it smells or, you know, looks weird, then she may have an infection. She didn't have that. But just for the sake of, you know, me saying, like, nobody, nobody told me that, you know. And then with her crying, she's not a really a crier. I mean, she cries... She's hungry. She cries. Um, really because she's hungry. Or she's maybe not comfortable, maybe, which is rare. But she's really not a cry. She's pretty much a good baby. But when she cries, you know, she's crying. And if you don't pick up in a certain amount of time, you know, they get louder and louder. And um, she finally is focusing on us a little bit. She'll move around her eyes and hear our voice. And she'll turn her head and um, stuff like that. And it's like, I said, um, Hmm, her belly button looks a little weird. Like, I don't, try not to let her cry so much because I don't want her, whatever we're doing, changing her, feeding her, like, let's try to get her thing fast or set the bottles up ahead of time, being that, you know, I am expressing milk um, besides breastfeeding. So try to get things set up because I don't want her to get a hernia. She has a hernia. And my boyfriend is, her dad is um, concerned about it. But the doctor said that it's okay as long as it's not hard or red around it. It only gets hard when, you know, she's crying. But um, when she's laying down flat, you can actually push it gently back inside her body, and that's fine. Um, so far as poops. Now, remember, she didn't poop when she was born. You know, so we had to be almost going to stay an extra day in the hospital when, I, in fact, I found out that the paperwork said at birth it was a little meconia but she pooped I would say she pooped again when we got home and then you know I was in the hospital then I came back out she pooped a few times like I think I would say every day she had a poop and as of last two weeks of her becoming a month she don't poop as much and 
I was kind of concerned about that. I haven't been able to talk to the pediatrician about it yet, but based off of things that I've read, they're saying that that's pretty normal. Breastfed babies don't poop all the time. Now, at the time, when she was pooping every day, I was supplementing. I was giving formula, breast milk, formula, breast milk. So, And then with the formula I was using, um, it was Infamil, um, the non-GMO. I felt like she was spitting up. Um, she doesn't really spit up at all. Well, she doesn't. Um, unless she doesn't burp, you're trying to burp her, but you're trying to take the opportunity to change her really fast because she's like milk drunk, falling asleep. So if she doesn't burp, then, um, she'll spit up, but it's just like a little bit, you know, like run out of her mouth where as opposed to the formula fed, she's like, Bleh. and then she's like real fussy. So I say, you know, I'm not even, I can't even supplement with this anymore. Cause I don't think that it's um, reacting well with her body. I hope you guys can hear me. <laughs> Um, I tend not to, um, be super quiet around her because I feel like that's the dumbest thing ever. Yeah, I can talk loud. It doesn't bother her because that's not how life is in the real world. Because if that was the case, if someone was to ring my doorbell or something was to fall, she'll jump up and wake up and then we would be screwed. So we make noise around her. We listen to music. We laugh. We joke. I laugh, especially being on me I'll start shaking and laughing stuff like that but so far motherhood at five weeks and it's it's weird when you're pregnant you count week by week by week right and then it's like when the baby is born you're supposed to count by their birthday but she was born on November 4th which was a Saturday so four Saturdays down December 2nd was actually four weeks which is a month so a lot of people were telling me no you're supposed to celebrate on her birthday that doesn't count but I'm like in reality it counts because she's been alive outside of me for a month so I celebrated her being a month on the 2nd of December but I also celebrated it on the 4th because I felt like technically she's been a month old living out of my body on December 2nd now, further along, I'll continue on the fourth, like, oh, you're two months, and da 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 because every month is different with a certain amount of days, so that would be a little silly. It's going to be a different day each month, but technically, I celebrated the first month. Um, so, I would say she's five weeks um, now. Um, anything else? So far, nothing else. My pregnancy acne went away. My forehead's kind of bumpy because I took out them braids and all the dirt and stuff that was there, like, really, like, messed up my skin. Um, I'm a little stuffy as well. Um, I've gained back nine pounds. Um, it snowed in, in New York and the park, they didn't clean it, so I couldn't go running. Um, I'm also not eating that healthy. I have to go back and make, well, I have an appointment in January so I can actually officially drink the sugary drink to make sure my diabetes is gone so they make sure it's gone. The preeclampsia medication, I'm not taking that shit anymore. My blood pressures are normal. They were making me constipated. Um, I heard that, you know, after you give birth, you know, they say, oh, your first poop is the worst. I didn't have any problems until I started taking that medicine as well as the headaches that come when you stop taking it and then retake it. So preeclampsia is gone. Um, so far, that's about it. Um, so far as baby, I will keep you guys posted. Thank you guys for still watching and subscribing. I'm going to try to make this page more about how it is to be a first time mom and also on my workout and breastfeeding journey. So until then.